be legal? The battle over prescription pot, next on Connecticut News, 11 at 11. Called the war over weed. Should sick people be allowed to ease their pain by smoking pot? Anti-drug activists say the claims are unproven and that the legalization of marijuana could lead to abuse. Tonight, in a special report called Prescription Pot, health reporter Carolyn Pennington introduces us to a man who uses marijuana to ease his pain. Well, Mark Bronstein doesn't care about the illegalities. Smoking pot has allowed him to lead a life free of pain. Mark is a paraplegic. A spinal cord injury has left him with no feeling at his waist and below his knees. It happened seven years ago when Mark injured himself in a diving accident. This home video, taken at the time of the accident, shows Mark jumping off a footbridge. When he lands, he breaks his back. Mark was hospitalized for over four months. He now relies on a wheelchair or crutches to get around. And he experiences spasms that send shooting pain through his legs. No one else could know, unless you're seated in the wheelchair, what it is to have pain and spasms from spinal cord injury. Even so, Mark says his life has changed very little since his accident. He continues to work full-time as a college librarian. He grows his own food, adhering to a strict vegetarian diet. Mark attributes this independence to his use of marijuana, which he smokes once a day. I need the equivalent of less than the space of a filter of a cigarette. Mark tried marijuana after refusing to take pharmaceutical drugs. I don't want to put into my body anything unrecognizable. Small studies and patient statements have suggested that marijuana can boost appetite in AIDS and cancer patients, reduce eye pressure and glaucoma, and treat muscle spasticity of multiple sclerosis. But for many in the medical community, the lack of scientific evidence and the potential for abuse is cause for concern. There is really no scientific evidence that it's effective. And there are potential side effects, like slowed reactions, lowered testosterone levels, and lung disease. Dr. O'Brien says smoking pot may also weaken your immune system. So on the one hand, you may gain weight, but it would be the last thing I would ever use if I had cancer or AIDS. And Dr. O'Brien doesn't put much stock in the anecdotal evidence. You're taking the statements of people who are under the effects of a mind-altering drug, such as marijuana, as to what the marijuana does. And Even so, Mark says he's been able to lead a normal life thanks to this weed. I think if I didn't use marijuana and use the pharmaceutical drugs, I think I'd probably be a walking zombie like most other paraplegics might be if they could walk. Yeah. And Mark is optimistic that the tide is turning. With voters in California and Arizona legalizing the medicinal use of marijuana, Mark feels that at the very least more studies will be done. Now here in Connecticut, lawmakers are expected to debate in the next two months whether to let doctors here prescribe pot for several illnesses. In the meantime, patients who think they may be helped by marijuana should consult their doctor. In most cases, other medications are available that work as well or better and are legal. Carolyn Pennington, Connecticut News. Medicinal marijuana will introduce you to one Connecticut man who's gone to great lengths to get a prescription. The of the drug war is an effort to provide some people with marijuana legally. Channel 3's health beat reporter Heather Cabot is here now with the story. Heather? Well, Denise, doctors can apply for a license to prescribe marijuana in Connecticut for cancer and glaucoma patients, but no doctor has ever applied. So, new, so a new London man went elsewhere to get his prescription. 45-year-old Mark Bronstein was paralyzed in a diving accident seven years ago and he makes no bones about the fact that he uses marijuana to ease his pain. Right above my knees is where I feel the pain. It's like jabbing knives right, right in there. And um, without any medication, those pains would return within 48 hours. The medication Mark Bronstein chooses is marijuana. He's been paralyzed from the knees down since 1990, and when he doesn't smoke his daily dose, he says the pain and leg spasms are unbearable. I wear leg braces, and I do have upper leg muscles, which are what's lifting my lower leg. If I have spasms, I can't get my leg braces on. So last summer, he went to the Netherlands to get a prescription for pot, and so far, police here haven't bothered him. He smokes less than a half a gram a day. It's less than 10 tokes. Daily dose. Um, that's all I need. But there are those who argue there is little clinical evidence to prove it works. Opponents of legalizing medicinal marijuana say the health risks of using the drug far outweigh the benefits. Today, the National again, Institutes again, of Health announced that medical uses evidence. of pot deserve more investigation. Uh, uh, we feel that, that it looks promising enough uh, to recommend that there would be some controlled, new controlled studies done.
That research could confirm that pot is useful in treating nausea in cancer patients, AIDS victims, and for glaucoma. While Bronstein doesn't fall into those categories, he says he's encouraged by the mainstream attention to the issue. If medical marijuana was the only issue involved, I wouldn't put myself out there for this. I don't think the stakes would be, in, would be great enough. But I think the states are great enough when, as soon as you get the medical marijuana um, legalized, then you get to the point of who's going to discern the ill from, from the able. Now, it is legal for doctors to prescribe a pill form of THC, the mind-altering chemical in marijuana. The drug is called Marinol, but some patients say it's not as effective in relieving... In 1990, on my 39th birthday, um, as a sort of a, uh, a joyous event, I was with friends, it was a celebratory occasion, we watched other men jumping off a footbridge into a river. Suicide Alley. Why don't you do it, Mar? It looked like a lot of fun and looked very easy, so I joined with them. Oh, oh. oh no. Are you okay, baby? And I ended up shattering my spinal column and injuring my spinal cord and was left paralyzed below the waist. There's two main side effects of it that people with such an injury have to deal with for the rest of their lives. One is spasms, which is uncontrolled movement of the muscles, and the other is the pain which accompanies those spasms. So in order to walk, I need to medicate those spasms. Soon after my injury, I sought alternatives and learned from the grapevine that marijuana is an ideal drug for both suppressing the spasms and for alleviating the pain. His symptoms are relieved by the marijuana. And I think it's partly because of his extremely upbeat personality and partly because he's getting physiological relief. So in my case, perhaps only my case, but certainly in my case, I've proven the efficacy of my use of marijuana because it has enabled me to live a life completely normally. Why would we arrest such a person? It doesn't have any of the usual reasons for arresting. We arrest to punish. Why would you punish someone for relieving his suffering? Not everybody agrees. But it's not because the people who disagree really, really want to punish such patients. They haven't been able yet to detach themselves from the years of propagandizing where we were convinced, many of us, that only maniacs use marijuana, only bad people. Not true. They're mostly like me and you, the regular Americans. And in this case, they're just like other patients who seek relief from suffering. So where effectiveness is high and toxicity is low, it's an ethical duty to make it available to people in need. It's a duty. Could marijuana be legally grown in Connecticut? That's something that has come up in the legislature every year for the past 10 years and has again this year. Some say it stands a good chance of passing. NBC 30's Andrew Pergam joins us live at our studio on the green in New Haven. Andrew. Hi, Lisa. It is one of the most controversial topics out there, making marijuana legal. The bill would not legalize it for recreational use. A prescription would be required, and it would only be available to those with medical conditions such as glaucoma, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, HIV, AIDS, and spinal cord injuries. And as one man is not afraid to tell us, marijuana has worked very well for him. Mark Bronstein was paralyzed 17 years ago and was suffering from muscle spasms and severe pain until 10 years ago when he got a prescription from a doctor he discovered in Holland. It turned out that marijuana is the natural way of alleviating not just the spasms but also accompanying pain. It's the only drug that does both. Originally, he says he smoked marijuana or medicated himself as he calls it daily. Now he does every two or three days. Again this year, the state legislature is taking up the matter of medical marijuana, considering a measure to become the 12th state to legalize the drug in some fashion. Every session, it inches closer, but does not pass. There are many people already using it, many more than you would imagine, because they're a little more discreet about things. However, to get it, they've got to resort usually to the same um, clandestine means as everyone else. 
There are plenty who don't see eye to eye with Bronstein, citing the drug's addictive qualities and studies, like a recent Yale School of Medicine report linking long-term marijuana use and respiratory ailments. Bronstein hopes the bill would alleviate some of the paranoia and stigma associated with what he says works. Legal or not, I have been using it for 17 years. Legal or not, I will be using it in the future.